This is a man, his name is Akiko Kondo. He married the woman of his dreams. That was in 2018. Uh, but this particular woman doesn't really exist when it comes to other folks. She is actually a hologram. And uh, there was some technology that was uh, created to help this gentleman find the girl of his dreams. Now, it does get a little different from here because uh, he's a 38-year-old man, he has friends, he's a normal guy. I know you guys are judging him already. But he fell in love with this particular fictional character of a pop singer who appears in anime, manga, and also video games. Again, this all sounds very much like someone you may have uh, come across in your life. This gets deeper. So here he is, he's 30 years old. He was dating Hatsune Miko is her name. She's depicted in pop culture as a 16 year old with turquoise hair. And for a decade he dated her before they had an unofficial wedding ceremony in 2018. Kondo, one of many who identifies as fictosexual, someone who is sexually attracted to fictional characters, spent 2 million yen or about $17,300 on the nuptials, but his family didn't attend. Here's wow. a picture of our hero. He's very happy with his bride. Let's look at this picture. I, I, it actually made me smile. Dude is feeling good. Let's keep it real. Um, so he was going through some issues. Here's some details of what he was dealing with. He was working as an administrator in a primary school about 12 years ago when he was picked upon incessantly by two women. It's crazy. One was close to his age and one was a lot older. When he greeted them in the morning, they would ignore him. They would, uh, then they would stand in the kitchen where he could hear them and they would call him names. And if he made a small mistake, they would shout at him, sometimes in front of the young students, uh, which, he was, uh, which he found humiliating. And the bullying got so intolerable that he left work. And for almost two years, he locked himself in his room and then he refused to leave. Uh, so in that isolation, after he quit that job and was sick of all the bullying, is when he found uh, and began dating his now bride, and uh, he returned to the real world. It brought him back out of his depression. So it's not, uh, it's, it's not that people can't live in society because they're engrossed in a two-dimensional world, but rather there are cases where people become captivated as they search for a place for themselves in video games and anime because reality is too painful for them. I was one of those people. People who don't understand the background probably think games are disrupting their lives, but that's not the case. Mm -hmm. So he's about making his point about who he really is and how this all works. And don't judge me, bro. Also in 2017, there was this device, as I mentioned at the top, it's called Gatebox and allowed him to speak uh, to that holographic version of Miku. And they also offered some marriage license, which he took, uh, uh, took advantage of. Now, um, let's show how Gatebox works and how it allowed him to do this. <laughs> And there you have it. Oh boy. Okay, so look, there's the funny part of this and the sad part of this, right? Uh, so, fictosexual, really, that's what we're doing now. Uh, and this Hasune Miku, apparently a lot of people are into her. That's like a big thing in Japan. She's a character, she sings. I think she might have sang with Lady Gaga or something. So, but since she's fictional, obviously, you can marry her and anybody else can marry her because it's not real. She's Polly. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, she's Paul. Anyway, yeah. So she can yeah. she can marry multiple people. Oh, I see. She's okay. I was like, I'm looking for a. I'm a boomer. I'm missing Polly. Polysexual. Yeah. Or yeah. Yeah, polygamous. Polygamous. If yes. she's getting married, it's polygamous. Yeah. Well, that's right. That's right. Well, no rules there. Um, that? If you're so his he throws the wedding seventeen thousand uh, dollars. Other fictosexual dudes show up at the wedding, and he's happy about that. That's their community, right? Uh, but the parents don't show up. I get that. And the people from work, he said, didn't show up. That I don't get. If somebody at work was saying to me, "Oh, I'm gonna marry a hologram. I'm a fictosexual. I'm going to that wedding. <laughs> okay, I'm definitely going to that wedding. And I think it was a virtual wedding. I mean, what are you not gonna go click the thing to watch that wedding? Are you nuts? Yeah, is there food? <laughs> right? Like, so 
Yeah, like if my best friend was getting married that day, I'd be like, brother, I love you, I wanna come. But this fictosexual dude I know, he's getting <laughs> married, and I gotta check that out. I mean, what in the world? There's right? actually no food, it's all just a figment of your imagination. It is also a hologram, you're like, damn it, I foiled again. <laughs> like, oh, what delicious hors d'oeuvres you have, oh, god damn it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's- um, I think my biggest problem with this is not the fictosexual, I think that's fine, whatever, do you. A lot of people were into Lola Bunny, whatevs. Um, I think the weird thing is that how many years has it been since Tupac appeared at Coachella and that's the best hologram we got? Really? A little baby, come on now, we gotta make him more life size. He's got, yeah. he's got to find a better system because as I think as I pointed out, that hologram company or that technology has since gone away. Oh. Yeah, so no, no, he's in a lot of trouble. He's hurt, dog, don't ask him if he's all right. <laughs> that's, that's why we're reporting on this now. He got married in 2018, but now he can't replace a part uh, so she can't, I think she can't talk anymore. Oh. So he's like, I've lost my communication. Like, you know, you buy an Audi and it's hard to find parts for the Audi, <laughs> I'm pretty right? I'm sure the parts okay. always been his hand. I mean, let's oh. be real. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Wait, I just have to say that my favorite part slash the most disturbing part of this entire story is the origin story, right? Of him being like, well, two real life women made fun of me, oh. which that felt very much like a one sided characterization of what happened. And that's why. I'm essentially an incel. I mean, that's the incel logic is like, well, women in the real world don't understand. Like, I would date them, but they don't get it. One time, one of them looked at me weird. Anyway, was I wearing pants? Probably not. But you know what I mean? And you're just like, why is it women's fault that you can't, like, for your own social anxiety? That's such misogynist, like, psychotic BS. Okay, now, but at the same time, incels in America are. Not all of them, okay, but there's been some spectacular cases of violence against women. In this case, there is no violence. The guy just withdraws from society and marries a hologram, right? And so I don't know how it went down in that actual room. And you're right, I'm positive there's a second side to that story. And he doesn't look like he's the most socially adept dude, right? But of course it's sad, guys, of course it is, right? Because it's not just about him. By the way, many people have married the same hologram. Um, and so, and a, and a lot of people in Japan, this is like a, an actual subculture, are fictosexuals, okay? And so, the what's happening is we're losing our human connections, we're losing our bonds. And that actually, if you, there's a really interesting Vanity Fair piece uh, this week out about the new right. And so, this is. A group that is being largely funded by Peter Thiel, who's a Silicon Valley entrepreneur, has eight billion dollars, financier more than entrepreneur. But anyway, um, and and they admit in the piece they're looking for a dictator. They've given up on democracy, mm. and uh, and it's super scary stuff. But one of the things that they hate is tech. And I'm like, that's so random because they're like, all the other stuff is political. But they also hate big tech. Now, part of it you understand because they think they're, they're being censored, etc. But I think that as I read the piece, they've lost a human connection. We used to have bonds between one another. Now nobody's looking out for one another. And by the way, here in LA, you'll see crime happen. Nobody does anything. A guy will do something to a woman and nobody will react. And you're like, do something. We used to be, we used to be a tribe. We used to to live together, work together, and, and care about each other. And those bonds are broken. So the new right here in this country is taking that to a dark place. Our bonds are broken, so I'm gonna go to the original bond. Hey, you look like me, you're the same identity as me. The original tribe. Right, and, and, and our, what does a tribe need? A tribe needs a king, right? And so they're going in that direction. In Japan, the bonds are broken in a different way, and they're going in this direction. But none of it is healthy. Like, so I'm with Francesca, you know, look, the government doesn't need to do anything about it. Nobody has to pick on the poor guy and just say, oh, you're not allowed to do that. If you want to, have at it, Hoss, you can. But I want something better for those guys. I want them to be able to establish a human connection. I did a whole story on this for National Geographic about um, about people who choose to essentially not date. And, and a lot of the reasons actually kind of similar to the United States, which is people are overworked. They're so overworked, they work till like eight or nine at night and they're tired as hell and like having a whole relationship is a big thing. Women and men are both choosing essentially not to engage in relationships. Then there's the added, there's not a lot of good childcare in Japan, just like there's oh. not good childcare here. Uh, things are expensive, just like, so there's other ways 
that I think we set ourselves up for the most inhuman and most tech driven of ways of socializing, you know? The parasocial is the element of this. Really fast, there's yeah. one sentence on this, because yeah. this graphics heaven, you guys. Parasocial relations occur when you experience a one-sided emotional attachment with a fictional character or a media personality. So which one of you guys out there watching right now has a parasocial relationship with Jake Uger here? I do, <laughs> when I'm okay. watching. I don't mind you fictionally marrying me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> In the real world, it's a little bit tougher, okay? You Do you really not mind that? If someone like said, like, our wedding date was July 7th, <laughs> it was beautiful, here you are. Mm. Would that wouldn't creep you out at all? N yes and no, look, <laughs> and look, obviously. Flattered? No thanks. No, no, obviously things didn't go right, right? And they should be marrying a real person and they should have a real human bond. But as long as they're not doing anything physical with me, like, oh, sure. okay, I, we were married. Why don't you remember? Okay, that's a problem, right? Okay, but like, otherwise, no, I, I don't. Always good mind. choice. Yeah, look, I, I'm gonna tell a totally crazy. Well, picture story. your face on a doll, maybe. If they yeah. showed you picture, just your cut out of face no, on like this no. flimsy doll. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.